From fight scenes to friendship, being able to make different characters interact with each other is a must for storytelling. Luckily, the steps to do this are pretty simple, so let's go over how to do it and some of the problems you might encounter along the way. Before we start, this is a list of extensions you might want or you must have. Some of them you probably already have installed, like ControlNet, and I'll talk about Regional Prompter vs Latent Couple in just a moment but I'll be using Latent Couple for this tutorial. All of them should be easy to install, just look for them in the Extensions Available tab and after hitting Load From and finding them, click Install. Once they are installed, just apply and restart. I will leave their link in the description, just in case. Alright, so let's say we wanted to make a man and a woman walking through the street. Just with prompting, we can get a pretty decent result. The problem is when we need specifics like a man wearing a blue hat and the woman wearing a red dress. The colors get mixed up, and now both of them are wearing hats. And of course, we can get generations where there is only one person. That is an easy fix though, we just add control and model for open pose and we will get the right amount. But the problem with colors still remains, and if I prompt for, let's say, Genos and Tai Li walking together, the Loras also get mixed up when we should expect something like this instead. So, let's see how to get it right. Yes, I am going to use animal auras for this as examples because they are easier to identify, but this process works for both realistic and anime as well as SDXL and SD 1.5. You will also be able to use this for environments and complex scenes. To start, you will need to choose your main extension, regional prompter or latent couple. Both of these extensions will let you create masks and prompt for what you want to go inside them, letting you prompt for a character description in one side and a different description in the other side like in this high five example. This way you have absolute control over what goes in each part of the image. Latent Couple is a bit more precise since you will be combining it with Composable LoRa for better results. And it is also very simple to understand. Regional Prompter is slightly faster when generating and easier for linear compositions, even if masking is annoying as hell. For what we want to do, Latent Couple is a little bit better in my experience, so I will explain that extension in more detail. But both are perfectly fine to use. So I will also give some tricks for Regional Prompter their users too. Whichever one you choose, this method will remain the same. So let's continue with this easy example to get the overall method down, and then we'll move on to the harder ones. Ideally, you always want to have a control net reference ready, even if you don't use it for an exact pose. It will help with creating the correct number of specified characters. In case of using latent couple, the next step will be to create a separate mask for each character for latent couple. I will take the control net reference to Photopea and paint over it creating a new layer. Use different colors for different masks, and remember to use a harsh brush, and then fill the background layer with white. This will serve as our background prompt. Try to always have some white space for this prompt. Import this mask into latent couple and click I've finished my sketch. This will automatically separate all the masks for you. You could also create a white canvas and guess paint if you don't care about nothing. For original prompter enthusiast, I would import the reference inside the spot right here, then adjust the canvas size and visualize. Now you can adjust the mask to match the position of your characters properly. Here you don't need a background mask. Continuing with latent couple though, now that you have the separated masks, let's prompt for each one. Under the general prompt, you want to add the context of the image as well as the enhancers and the background. So in this case, we want an anime illustration of a couple walking through a busy street, 4K, daylight, wallpaper. Next, we prompt for what the character on the right will be, in this case, Tylee. To add the Lora, I'll first look for it and add it to our regular prompt, then just copy paste it into latent couple. Add the keyword for the Lora, in this case Tai Li, one girl, woman, and we will also add some of the context of our background prompt, walking through a busy street, couple. And now we repeat for Genos, adding the Lora and prompting for the character with some context. The alpha blend and weight can be referred to as the segregation sliders. They represent how much each prompt will stay inside its mask. The lower the alpha value, the more the general prompt will affect that mask. I usually keep the mask sliders at 1, and the alpha blend will be a little more situational. The reason we add context to our prompts is to avoid losing the background completely while maintaining the characters. Another way to get more of the background is by using a higher alpha blend, since it makes it affect all the masks more. If you push it too high, it will mix up with our characters, forcing us to in-paint later on. If you wanted to prioritize the background, this is a good way to do it though. For now, I'll keep it at 0.2 and use a higher value if I don't like how it turns out. All set for now. 
Let's click on Prompt Info Update. This will save the information on what prompt goes where, as well as creating our final prompt by separating the prompts of each mask with the keyword AND. If we click Generate Now, you will see how the image is still not good. That's because for Latent Couple, we need to use Composable LoRa, an extension that you should have. Let's just enable it and hit Generate again. Cool! Looks like the image is generating nicely now, but we can see that there are still a few issues with it. Ignoring the faces for now, the main problem is that having two LoRa's at the same time creates these flat colors and artifacts. And this one is kinda tame, some LoRa's may be way worse. Some things that might help with this issue are lowering the CFG scale a bit, lowering the control net weights, and lowering the weight for each LoRa. However, all of this sacrifice either the prompt comprehension, a proper pose, and maybe even losing the character. Sometimes, changing this will be enough on its own, but most of the time they are just parameters to keep in mind that can help as we do this next step. If we don't want to compromise all of that, we need to step up our LoRa usage game. You see, this issue happens at the end of the generation, where the LoRa weight is too strong and instead of letting the model add details, it keeps baking the character, even if it is already well done. That's because LoRa's affect the image using always the same weight. Our ideal scenario would be something like this, where the LoRa starts strong until the character is already well defined, and then slowly starts disappearing letting the model take over. Well, typing this thing when using Composable LoRa, we can control just that. The first number controls the base variable weight of the LoRa. What we type next determines the way the weight will evolve over time, time being the number of steps. And finally, this number right here controls at what percentage of steps the variation will start. 0.5 being 50% of the total steps. We can actually control way more than this, like the opposite of cooldown would be warm up, or using words like increment or decrease. I will leave a video in the description that talks about all the possibilities this extension offers. It's a lot. For this to work, we will go in Stable Diffusion, activate Composable LoRa with Step, and plot the LoRa weight in all steps. Then, on our prompts for latent couple, we will add the following. And yes, I will leave this type down in the description so you can just copy-paste. Just copy the same format for the other LoRa. Important that you keep in mind that some LoRa have stronger overfitting than others, so if you see one acting up, make sure that one stops earlier than the others, and maybe lower its weight a little bit too. Now just update the prompt info and click generate. Maybe 0.5 is a little too late, so I tried 0.35, and it was better. Remember that all these values are always a base for you to work with. Each LoRa, checkpoint, and each image will require different values, as you can see on these examples. If you see your character getting lost, then go higher, and if it is overfitting, go lower. For Regional Prompter, you won't be using Composable LoRa, because there's no need for it and it will just make your generations slower. You will just use Latent instead of Attention. This means that you can't control the LoRa at every step like we were doing right now. What you will do is come down here to LoRa Stop Step and fully stop using the LoRa at a step you think fits. I'm using 30 steps, so about 14 or 16 should do. This will give you very similar results as Latent Couple with Composable LoRa. To finish with our text to image setup, and before moving to a more complex composition, let's fix the faces with After Detailer. A regular After Detailer prompt won't work, because we have two very different faces. We are going to go under Settings, after Detailer, change this from None to Left to Right, and now we will prompt for the faces regularly, from left to right. So the first face will be Genos, then separate this prompt by typing open square bracket SEP and close square bracket. That will make it so the face on the left is Genos and the next step on the line will be the one after Sep, so in this case Tai Li. If we had more faces, we would keep going, like I did in this image right here for example. Since the faces are pretty bad, I will use a higher than noising strength, and I like to use 512 by 512 to save some time. Treat this extension like you would regular in painting for only masked. By the way, big thanks to Keyboard Alchemist, since I learned about this option when Kronos recommended me their After Detailer video on Discord. I will leave it in the description so you can learn more about this super useful extension. And on that note, also thanks to another content creator, Leighton Liminality, who told me about it a little bit later. Both are very good channels that will be in the description. You can also fix faces by generating with high res, which will make them automatically pretty good. But it will take a long time if you don't have a good GPU. To actually upscale this, I would recommend just going 
according to image to image and use the same setup with latent couple and its mask. Here you can use a higher alpha value and there's no need for the composable LoRa fancy stuff this time. Just lower the LoRa's weight. Also, control net tile can be pretty nice for this. Just use a strength of 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 or whatever you want to be honest and play with it. Add after detailer to this and you are pretty much done. Knowing this, you can repeat this process to create what you're looking for. For example, controlling the background with a segmentation model and then working with a nice base image. And of course, in painting if you think something could be better. You can add more characters if you need them, pretty much as many loras as you want. Even though, past 5 at a time, I couldn't get them all to work. Ok, we are done with the base method, at least for simple compositions like this one where each character is separated and not interacting. From now on, we will have 3 levels of difficulty. One. Compositional. This is where the main problem resides in the type of shot we are looking for. They can be easy to get or pretty hard. It's kind of hit or miss. 2. Divided interaction. Images where each action happens on a part of the screen, but they touch at the center. Like a handshake. These aren't too hard but require fixing. And finally, overlapping. Images where one mask needs to overlap a different one, splitting the character in two. Some are simple, others not so much. From here on out, you will be needing control net references most of the time. Mainly open pose and death maps. I will leave this video in the description where I go over easy ways to make them. Ok, for compositional images like a cowboy shot or an over the shoulder shot, the main issue will be the depth and overlapping of the mask. Well, actually, the worst issue will be to make the characters face the right way. The process itself doesn't actually change much. Mask the parts, prompt accordingly and use the lore as you'll need. The most important part in these cases is fine-tuning your control net's model weight and ending step, as well as prompting for the type of shot you are looking for. It is very likely that you'll have trouble with characters that are facing backwards, like in the over-the-shoulder shot, where AI tries its hardest to put them facing the camera, or has a tough time making just the back of the head. Also, with just using a cropped part of a character, like the legs on a cowboy shot, that could either get fully destroyed or make you lose the rest of the image cause you need a very high depth weight. Some of this you can easily fix with in-paint sketch, like in the case of the back of the head, you just take a different color, paint over it, use a medium denoising strength and you're pretty much done. If you have trouble with a specific composition, like not getting proper legs on the cowboy shot in my case, you can prioritize the composition to in-paint later. For example, I used a higher depth map weight, the lowest possible while still maintaining an ok background. That way I could get the leg shape right. After that I just went and in-painted them so they looked mechanical. If in image to image it has trouble maintaining the shape, just use a canny model and play with the control net values a bit. In cases where there's a part of control net that isn't working properly, but another one is, like here with the legs messing up, but the character not so much, and I'm still not sure if this works or not, what I've been trying is to divide the death map in two parts, one for the legs, which I'll put at a higher value and ending step, and then the character, which I will use at a lower value. That way we can focus on the legs without destroying our character. We will still need to imprint, but we have a nicer background now. Since compositions can change too much and I can't cover them all, let's look at the divided interaction images. These are very similar to the first images we made, usually the only difference is that you will need a good control net reference or a high lock stat, and that nothing will save you from fixing stuff later. Up until now, we only used open pose references to count the number of characters and choose their position in the image. There was no need for them to follow the pose fully. But now we need to ensure that at least the touching parts are posed and have a high weight. Make sure that the masks also stop at the right angle. And don't go over the other character's side. The rest is just using the first method normally until you find an image that you like. After that, we should fix the hands. I'm going to use the methods I explained in this video right here, but since this video is not about that, I'll just quickly do something that kind of looks like a handshake. Use the reference, made a line art and then imprint it. You can, of course, dedicate a little more time to this if you care. This is fine by me at the moment. And finally, we have overlapping interactions, which are probably the hardest ones to get right and will usually need inpainting and cleanup. The hardest part for these images is playing with control net models so that you get a decent result that follows what you want. Most of the time, stuff will get mixed up and distorted, and you might lose your character in the parts that are overlapped. The more crossing parts you have, the more cleanup and better playing skills you will need. I tried to make the punch image with this much overlap, and I ended up using the only thing League of Legends ever taught me. I surrendered. Decided to try again, but with the poses being a little further away. This time it was way easier. On these generations, control net open pose and death play a huge role on the results. Good settings on a death map can make or break your image. I will give you some guidelines, but every image will be different. 
The open pose model you can keep it pretty high, and not touch anything else. For poses like this I left it at 1 or even higher, and did not touch the control net starting or ending step at all. But for depth you want to be very careful, mainly with the ending step. Depth is focused on the first steps of the generation, and its goal is to ensure that things are at the correct distance relative to the camera, and your goal is to experiment until you find out exactly at which step it has achieved that, and then take it out. For example, in our punch generation the depth map is important, so that Hinata's leg goes behind Jinx, and not in front, like what could happen if we stop the depth map too soon, or we use too low of a weight. But if we use a high weight and don't stop the map soon enough, the image turns out flat and the characters might get lost. I usually start with a 0.35 weight and 0.3 ending step. If it works like that then I'm happy and we all chill. But if it doesn't, I will slowly increase the values. In cases where you can't fine tune it enough and need to use a very high depth weight, do as we did for compositions. Prioritize shape and then inpaint for the correct characters, adding their trademark details with inpaint sketch, for example. It will take more time, but it will make pretty much anything possible, if you have the patience for it. There are also some images that will give a mistake in one place or the other. For example, this shot with three Loras closely interacting with each other, with more hands than my dude Godric. In this, there are a lot of masks touching on the same spot, and it is likely that AI doesn't use the Laura as much in that part, missing some tattoos for example, forcing you to clean that up. One way to do this is to make a lot of variations and mix the best parts of each one together. Things like a hug or dancing are way simpler to accomplish if you make the mask properly. The only thing that might mess up are tiny parts of the mask or, as always, the hands. But I haven't found a way to really get those right other than just correcting them with inpaint and photoshop. If you have any problems when generating, make sure to join our discord and ask your issues away. There are a lot of amazing people in there that are willing to help. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and see ya!